All right, so Take Back the Night took place last week. It's an annual rally where a lot of women's groups all over the city of London come together and promote and spread awareness about violence against women. So, very good cause. Mm -hmm. I was actually working downtown that night and I was very impressed by how many people were literally taking back the night. It's a very important issue that everyone should be aware of. And it's not just women walking, there's lots of men out there supporting this march as well. I definitely agree. Well, yeah. it was a good turnout? Yeah, it was great. There were so many people. Cool. Well, let's see how it turned out. And basically this event is for women. Um, it's done in order to support women being able to walk alone at night without any escorts. And now we're going to take a look at the rally that's happening here. Brings you girls here. To take back the night, to make sure that all women have the right and the freedom to walk at night and feel safe. And the community in London? Definitely, definitely. I think that a lot of the community saw us out tonight and hopefully a lot of them came out with us and hopefully a lot of them heard what we were saying. I think it's making people more think that it continues. Like every year, that more people will come, more people will join, and eventually it will make a huge difference. I think that we love seeing men on the sidelines cheering on. It's really supportive, and there's some guys doing so it's awesome. Yeah, we are excited about that. And what do you think the next step should be to improve like, women's security and everything? I think for men to get involved and for men to speak up against uh, violence against women. Um, that starts to happen, there'll be uh, more of a stigma. It would be better to get men involved in this walk as well? Uh, I think that's a possibility, yes. I don't see any problem with getting our men involved uh, because, you know, uh, we are both men and women in this world and we um, have to get them involved, show them the side that the women face when they're uh, walking at night and it's dark and they feel you know, unsafe and things like that. So I think that's a good idea to get the men involved. So anything that would do that would be a great idea. So what brings you here tonight? This was an important night for me. It meant a great deal to me uh, because of a personal incident that happened many years ago that was violent. And I have not been able to come out to one of these, even though I really, really wanted to, until tonight. And I thought to myself, I've got to come out tonight. This is it. No more excuses. I, I would have loved to have just worked away with my little AutoCAD plan and kept going. And I said, no, it's, it's time to march. And so I did, and I'm so glad I did. I am really happy with myself. I'm proud of myself, and, and I feel like I should be. Uh, it's, it's an empowering event. event. It's, a, it's an empowering event. It makes you feel stronger and united. There's a lot of solidarity that can be felt. Everybody's chanting the same kinds of things and people are just feeling uh, much better about, um, about, about how they will see their future. All right, so Steve Kopp, a big-time radio personality at CHO Revue, is celebrating 25 years of being on the air. 25 years? Yeah, That's a big. long time. No kidding. If he's been around for that long, he's got to be good. Huh? He has to be. Yeah, maybe I should check out his show. You definitely should. His show, The History of Us, airs on Tuesdays from 3.30 to 6 on 94.9 CHRW. and I've been a volunteer here at CHRW Radio Western since the uh, middle of September 1980, so 28 years. I think I'm the longest serving member who's here. Not the oldest, but the longest serving uh, volunteer here at the station. All right, not one, not two, not three, but four versions of Helter Skelter today on our 25th anniversary show here. I started here when I was a student at Western, and uh, I, I came in in September 1980, and there was a little, on the bulletin board in the Gazette offices inside the main door was a, a bulletin that was saying, you know, if you're interested in news and sports and doing radio, come on to this meeting. So I went to the meeting in you know, September 17th, I think it was, 1980. And so I originally did sports. I still continue to write for the Gazette, but I did sports and you know, did some football and hockey broadcasts, so that's really where I got started. But it's interesting, the summer of 1981, you know, the summertime's a little bit more quiet around here and they need people to fill in shows and stuff. So I talked to the 
chief announcer, John Quain was his name, and said, you know, I'd like to do a music, a radio show, a music show. And he was a little bit apprehensive because my musical background was more mainstream than the alternative side, which is what CHW and Caps Radio Station is known for. But he agreed to let me do it, and that was in June of 1981, and I still do sports, but I've been doing a music show ever since. So for the foreseeable future, I'll stick with it. Whether I get to the 50th anniversary, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> So Adam, yo, why do you think it's important to join clubs on Clubs Week? To avoid the rather antisocial nature of university. I think the main reason people join clubs is to meet people that have similar interests. So that's why I'm trying to find something I'm interested in so I can meet similar people. Cool.